But when a company is changing so drastically, when AI is changing things so drastically, when the economy and market conditions are changing so drastically, when a company in Ohio in the United States is losing an employee to a company based in Liechtenstein, all of a sudden they're going, wait, what the hell is going on here? The world has changed. I think we need to be able to grow our people faster so that they can adapt because a person's job today is going to be very different in 30 days and very different in six months. And COOs need to be really good at growing people. You were jacked into the CEO community. You've written a book about COOs. You have thousands Ooh. of COOs that you've spoken to over many, many years. As it stands right now, as we head into 2024, what do you see as the priorities for COOs talking to all these folks as we head into 24? What are they now thinking about? And maybe how is that different from previous years? My sixth book is called The Second in Command. And it was really written for this COO community. So there's a couple of things happening right now that are very different from the last, really the last 14 years. From 2009 until 2023, the economy and the market was going up. Your business was growing. It was like rising tides lift all boats. So really any leader 35 or under has never known business to ever be tough. They've never built a business through a downturn, through an economic crisis, through inflation. Right now, we're in a period of quasi-stagflation, which is a, a recession plus inflation happening at the same time. And it's hard for entrepreneurial organizations or COOs to lead through that. So they have to start understanding how to lead through tough times, how to lead through unideal situations. They have to be able to confront the brutal facts. They have to be able to make decisions and understand the budget and the P&L and gross margins and ratios better. So they really have to have a better hand on the numbers and budgeting than they ever needed before because business just grew because everybody was growing. That's number one. Number two, I saw a t-shirt years ago and it said, right now out there, someone is practicing and when they meet you in head-to-head competition, they'll beat you. And I think right now the rate of change in our businesses is so fast that if you're not growing quickly, if you're not adapting quickly, you're dead. You know, if the rate of change outside your business is greater than the rate of change inside your business, you're out of business. And companies have to adapt with the use of technology, leveraging AI, leveraging automation, um, being able to work with hybrid workforces or even bring people back into the office. We don't have years to figure something out. We don't have months to figure something out. We have to adapt to change much quicker. So we have to be able to surround ourselves with a network of people we can lean on. We have to make decisions faster. We have to look at the data. That's something that I think is very different for COOs. And then I think third is we need to be able to grow our people's skills faster than we've ever grown them before. We used to be able to hire people saying, I'm going to hire you to do a job. I'll hire you based on your past experience. You'll come in and use that experience to do your job. And, you know, we'll train you a little bit over time. But when a company is changing so drastically, when AI is changing things so drastically, when the economy and market conditions are changing so drastically, when a company in Ohio in the United States is losing an employee to a company based in, you know, Liechtenstein, all of a sudden they're going, wait, what the hell is going on here? The world has changed. I think we need to be able to grow our people faster so that they can adapt because a person's job today is going to be very different in 30 days and very different in six months. And COOs need to be really good at growing people. I've always visualized that our people have to grow in three ways. We have to grow their confidence. We have to grow their skills and we have to grow their network. So I almost visualize like an employee is climbing up two ladders that are right beside each other and their left hand and left foot are climbing up the skills ladder and their right hand and right foot are climbing up the confidence ladder. So our job is to grow their skills and grow their confidence, which grows their skills, which grows their confidence. And at the same time as you're doing both of those to try to grow their network so that they're plugged into other communities of people doing similar jobs so that their resources are able to be shared very quickly. Very similar to a kid who's, you know, 10 years old playing computer games. They have this global network of people that they're collaborating with and problem solving with. We have to plug our operations people into operations communities like the Ops Spot, where they're connected with other people in operations. We have to plug our IT people into communities like seven CTOs. We have to plug our marketing people into communities like Trends. We've got to be able to plug our people into communities. And then we have to figure out not the skills around what they do, like how to use a software or how to do a a YouTube ad or how to run a payroll process. But we need to grow their skills around how to be leaders, grow their skills around delegation, situational leadership, coaching, 
project management, handling conflict, time management, running interviews, kind of the executive functioning skills so that people can become stronger at leading themselves and leading teams. And I think if we do that and then couple it with a lot of praise, a lot of gratitude, a lot of celebrating the core values, that will grow their confidence. So leaders need to be really, really good at stuff around situational leadership, coaching, delegation, running one-on-one meetings and growing people. When it comes to uh, the CEO as a budget and the question of them looking at the budget for 24 and making new decisions uh, this year that were different from last year, like where mm. do you think that skew comes from a little bit? And if they're going to invest more in, you know, let's say, uh, you know, kind of coaching capability or training capability or kind of growing people's careers or anything in that space as an example, where should they be drawing down? How do you balance that equation, I guess? I always look for leverage, right? I always look for how can I do something and leverage it so that I get more than one output from that one thing I'm doing. So as an example, let's say that I was bringing in a coach to train people on running proper job interviews, right? It it blows me away the number of managers who interview and hire people and they've had no training on running interviews. So I would hire a consultant. We'd run a training session on running interviews. I would then have that session videoed and I would share that video with all other managers and leaders that couldn't attend. I would have anyone who came to that session also maybe read the book Who or read the, the, the chapter from my first book, Double Double on People, chapter two. And then I would have them kind of do a book report on what did you learn from the books and what did you learn from the consultants and and what are you going to be putting in place? And I would try to cobble together some kind of an internal program around skill development, which leverages my money and it leverages the kind of virality part of, of the learning. The other part is it's around growing their confidence, right? And I think we often miss that, that if you've got an employee base that feels good about their jobs, feels good about their skills, they're going to work harder, they're going to work smarter, they're going to get better results. So it's doubling down around the praise. It's doubling down around the gratitude. It's doubling down around, you know, celebrating all of our successes. And I think a lot of leaders miss out on that one. Another reason what led me to the CEO Alliance is being in a group with like-minded people that are just trying to get better at what they're doing. And there's a commitment to not only yourself, but but your peers within those groups as well to support them and help them. And that's where the servant, the servant heart, the servant leadership. For me, I, I fill my bucket not only get